Okay, so the symbol today is uh, mu, which is this, the 12th Greek letter. So mu can actually mean lots of different things in physics. It can mean things like friction, it can mean the permeability. But today we're focusing on the representation of mu as the magnetic moment. So it's, it's a quantity which tells us about the strength of magnetic field that a particular object will generate. So, so there are lots of things that generate magnetic fields. We can have a bar magnet like this thing. We can have a compass needle, of course, which is like another bar magnet. We Hang can on, have. What's that compass? What's in that? That's it's um, Felix, who is a s obscure <laughs> Swiss character, I think. Where does that come from? Uh, it's come from my son, who's when he was much younger, so he may be embarrassed. <laughs> Well, See that's, that on that's, video. That's embarrassing to the max. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so another thing that would generate a magnetic field is a coil of wire if we put current through it. So all of these would have associated with them a magnetic moment, mu, and the strength of the magnetic moment will tell us how strong the magnetic dipole field that each of these different things would generate. So these generate quite strong magnetic moments. So this might generate a magnetic moment of, say, 0.1 amps meters squared but what I wanted to focus on today is the magnetic moment that's generated by the hydrogen nucleus which is a much much smaller magnetic moment so of the order of uh, about 10 to the minus 26 so the magnetic moment from the hydrogen nucleus arises because the hydrogen nucleus has a positive charge and also it has a quantum mechanical property which is a bit harder to explain known as spin. If you think about a, a spinning ball of charge, as it moves round, let's try and put it like that, the charge is moving, so this is a very hand-waving hand -waving description of what's going on, but a moving charge corresponds to an electric current and so we can sort of imagine, we can make a simple model that the rotating, spinning nuclear charge, positive charge, gives rise to a current which gives rise to a magnetic field. And that's the magnetic moment of the hydrogen nucleus. So the hydrogen nucleus is interesting because the nuclear magnetism is, of the hydrogen nucleus is what underlies most of magnetic resonance imaging, which is, of course, a technique that was developed here in Nottingham by Sir Peter Mansfield, and it's one that we currently do, uh, do research in and continue to develop. So we get the signals that we use to make images from hydrogen nuclei. The unit for, you can write the unit for magnetic moment in, in different ways. The normal one is amps meters squared. So you can kind of, the easiest way to understand that, I guess, is if you think about a coil like this, this, this coil has, will, when we connect it to a power supply, would carry a current, currents measured in amps, and then it has an area inside it. So the area of this, the sort of circular cross section of this, we could measure it in meters squared. So the magnetic moment depends on the product of the, the area and the current, and also, in fact, the number of turns that are present there. So that makes sense easily for this kind of arrangement. For for something like a bar magnet, it's sort of less obvious, but it has the same dimensional unit. It's, it's, it is really an amazing technique. It's something that grew out of pure physics as well. It's something you could never have predicted, really, if you'd gone back 40 years and predicted that this physics idea of, make, of measuring signals from nuclear magnets could be used one day to make beautiful images of someone's brain, you would never have guessed that. It's something completely unpredictable. But it's really turned out, something grew out of pure physics and it's turned out to be incredibly useful.